So I wanted to continue my vlog, so this might be vlog, should have been vlog 2, but it's now ended up vlog 3. Uh, I think I did say I was going to do 3 in the series. And um, I wanted to go into more detail about um, the retreats that I've done, because I've only done 2 in my life, and both are really moments in my life where the tide has turned and I am forever changed so for that reason I'm super happy that I've picked two retreats that have been real cornerstones so, so the first was the Wim Hof Method in 2016 and the second was this September and what I liked about this retreat that it was part silence um, and no comms to the outside world or no um, communication with even my phone what it kind of really allowed me to do is be in the richness of insight my emotion and presence and uh, that enabled me to step out of my trance of daily life and into like a kind of found awakening and freedom from it all um, and finally at the end I can honestly say I feel comfortable in my own skin um, in the sense that I don't know my personal I kind of reflected on my personal successes and failures not that I even call it that but those wounds became wisdom and actually make profound sense so the confusion that I had in my early years really kind of will make sense to me now and has had profound healing so it's made me realize that the journey really is a blessing and a privilege to be here especially as I've had two chances um, and that's really a, a profound moment of awakening for me really brought this to life but I do know that shame doesn't survive in the light but uh, you've probably never really heard me say about my father um, as in my adoptive father or father that I know because uh, he's the only father that raised me up up until the age of nine when my parents got divorced but uh, there was definitely abuse uh, with my father and alcohol uh, he was an alcoholic and um, yeah I felt I suppose over the last eight years that he's just a wounded soul and and that was it really and I wish him well I think that's all because we didn't really have a relationship I was um, rationalizing you know I was, went from daddy's girl straight to violation uh, abuse and then my parents got divorced uh, like a year later and then really didn't hit me until I was a teenager and discovering yeah the violation and what it how it impacted me in my um, male relationships um, and then I just think I numbed it all out and then eight years ago everything hit me at once um, after my burnout and going to the Wim Hof Poland and I've been spending the last eight years just trying to trying to unravel it all so I thought I might as well tackle the adoption as uh, that came first if you like uh, but uh, I do believe now speaking to quite a few adoptees that um, adoption isn't the, f the only trauma that ad adoptees go through uh, yes I went through um, uh, another trauma before I was nine and one I don't really want to say too much about um, only because it's a little bit of a taboo subject and I've and I and I found it really hard to talk about it because I don't want to be a victim in it um, and I don't want to have people look at me as if they feel sorry for me or have that kind of like logging eyes of like do I hug you do I not hug you this is kind of awkward and uh, yeah and I and I really don't want it to be that way but I do feel uh, I have a voice for it now um, and I do not condemn what he did it really brought up a lot of mistrust um, I think mainly confusion of like why adopt me and then treat me like that uh, it makes no sense uh, and really questioned uh, the word love 
and worthiness uh, from daddy's little girl to, as I say, the, the abuse, uh, the violation, and then uh, the, the, the sudden divorce where he just said, they're not mine anyway, which granted, I'm not biologically my dad's, but he chose to adopt. Uh, and actually, on reflection now, maybe it was more my mum's wish and he just went along with it because he was married to her. I don't know, not my story. But, um, but during the last uh, few weeks, actually, I've come to a place of forgiveness and I really wanted to forgive my, my dad, my father, for what he did. Um, and, and it was handled really beautifully where I gave myself time and space for my emotional child to be seen and be acknowledged of what she went through back then and really then saw it from my father's point of view and maybe his abuse in his childhood and stuff like that and as I said I'm not condemning what he did at all um, but I don't blame him and I found compassion uh, along my journey that I can talk about him in a, in a beautiful light uh, that he doesn't affect me at cellular level anymore so and I think that's really important for me on my onward journey I've just been wanting to let go of that baggage and uh, for so long but I just felt trapped but there's no anger now there's no um, there's nothing um, and I really hope this is a, a fresh start for me now that I am really letting go of you know what I've swept under the carpet and as I said it's just more of a voice now that uh, for other uh, adoptees that maybe you know if you want to talk about it you could talk about it if you don't that's cool but just know that if you uh, really face it you can really dissolve it uh, and I've, as I said I've, it's from a beautiful place of compassion for both my parents so much so that I actually think they were wonderful parents it was just the, the odd the odd you know percentage there that led me into confusion but if they hadn't have done what they did you know to adopt me bring me over to another country I mean that all took courage and with my mum and I we had um, we did have a beautiful relationship and she and, I've, and I'm grieving a friend now uh, and a mum rather than seeing all the bitterness that she brought before she died so and the same with my father he chose not to get to know us and kind of his loss I kind of think I'm quite cool so <laughs> Um, no, in all seriousness, because they were so bad at parenting in some ways, it really made me turn to nature, father, son, mother, earth as my guidance, and uh, I trusted so much in nature, more than humans, but now I really feel that they've done a great job, but I have the best of both worlds now, um, and I'm loving my uh, real, genuine connections with other soulmates around the world, and I'm really loving my time in nature and the trust is there to now respond more in love but it's uh, I feel lighter so I thoroughly recommend uh, going deep pain goes deep and I went deep and I acknowledged my being so I acknowledge my emotional child that I actually think and I hope my emotional child has grown up a little bit and is not and I'm not acting from a you know a seven eight nine year old I'm sort of acting more emotionally from maybe I got into the 20s or 30s or maybe my own age and that would be really really cool. It might change my ways and relationships now and how I see people. Uh, as I said it's been a really slow integration back into society after that um, and I'm really seeing the world that uh, yeah I guess uh, I do have a purpose, still haven't really figured that one out but maybe it's to bring back the unconditional love. Um, because it was definitely not there when I was growing up um, and if that's uh, if that's my mission or if that's my purpose then yeah I choose to accept it and maybe that's why I came down here and entered this body but I just wanted to thank this channel and you guys for being so supportive and really commenting with beautiful thoughtful comments along my journey of throwing myself into nature and waterfalls um, I've been doing it to process a lot um, and now I, it's all out there I actually don't have any more skeletons in my closet so to speak so yeah they're pretty big ones uh, adoption uh, illegal adoption uh, and then as I say violation and then a divorce uh, and then you know at 50 my brother had a head injury and he died on the ambulance in the ambulance on the way to have surgery 
And so at 15, I was 13, I lost my brother. But I gained a beautiful uh, soul of a brother who is um, finding his way in dealing with a head injury now. Um, so a lot happened to me when I was younger and I'm so glad I'm in this way now. And it's given me my voice. And uh, I am not afraid to use it. My mum gave me such independent tools to give me the life that she didn't have. Uh, and, I, and I really value that. She's done a lot for me. And uh, my dad, well, uh, as I said, he just gave me what he could with the tools that he had. Uh, and he honoured not staying in my life to mess it up even more. Um, as I say, I don't, uh, I don't think it was right what he did, but as I said, I don't hold the bitterness inside me, so I am not drinking my own poison again. And then um, finally, uh, I'm really looking forward to the uncertainty of this world right now and the future it brings and just see where it takes me so my next transformation now i think i'm going more into the less people pleaser um because it's just an easy life just to ple be a people pleaser um but it's i'm not going to be that person anymore um i don't want to take on my parents patterns uh, it stops there so i'm finding my own boundaries now and finding my own voice um, but really from a, a new identity of what actually self I means because um, I actually think that the future is collaboration and oneness and you guys are just reflecting things for me to learn even more about myself and um, maybe we're all just characters in this play um, but I thank the characters for doing a freaking good job to make me wake up even more so in summary, I feel that my whole beginning in life was all about secrets and not being transparent and I no longer live in fear for the secrets that I've carried around in my lifetime and I was really struggling with secret and privacy because I obviously think there's a difference between the two but there was a stage in my life where I thought, oh it's okay, I'll rise above it all will be well I know coping tools and you know that's enough uh, they can't bother me they can't affect me and what I realized was that I was repeating the negative patterns and behavior of my parents or the counter behavior for their negative patterns uh, that it wasn't enough for me anymore that what I really liked about my second retreat is that I kind of witnessed and was in my emotional pain but with absolute kindness because it gave me sacred space to go back there and kind of let myself off the hook in the sense that I saw and was with my inner child and allow a reprogramming and it's really enabled me to join my body mind and spirit in a profound way and it's just amazing and it really complements uh, the Wim Hof method as well and for that reason yeah I feel like a profound shift in my healing and it was exactly what I needed because I was um, looking for love and, accept and acceptance I really got that from me and not external and there was a few things going on in my life which led me to this retreat and that was why I was being really kind and helpful and elevating others and they did not see me and I thought it doesn't matter because my intention was pure and from the right place but it bothered me that they got angry and bitter so that's why I did this because it was a beautiful indication that my emotional child was not seen and needed to be seen and I wasn't covering that up with increasing my happy hormones and endorphins from what um, cold water gives me. I sat with it and dissolved it through acceptance in another healing modality. So how wonderful is that? Let's see what the future brings me next.